Hello everybody and welcome to this breakdown of Teppan character Wesker. Today we'll be looking at Wesker's hero arts, deck synergy, and general strategies. By the end of this video you should have an understanding of all that is Wesker, along with some QR codes to make yourself some of the decks you see today. Wesker is a black element hero from the Resident Evil franchise. His typical strengths come from revenge and destruction cards. His three hero arts will drastically alter how his decks are played, so it's very important that you choose your hero art and build your deck to complement the power you're going in with. Wesker's starter hero art is Dark Destruction. This hero art destroys a unit that costs 5 MP or less. Dark Destruction serves as one of the more meta hero arts up to version 1.1. Dark Destruction is a fantastic pick against any dual color decks and even serves as a hard counter to most other decks containing low cost unit cards. As an example, Dark Destruction can counter Rathalos' Wrath Awoken hero art, as it is typically used on low-cost creatures to give them a massive boost while also trying to fly over your own units. It also ignores shield effects as it can counter all of the MP booster cards, such as Iris, that serve as a key component to most green and dual-colored decks. It can even put a damper on Nergigante's spike launch strategy, since the cards used to sacrifice life are typically low-cost with high power. The weakness of Dark Destruction comes when they start using high MP cards that are heavy hitters. Green decks usually have these heavy hitters to protect from Dark Destruction. Even Red has a couple of commonly used high hitting cards such as Fate Defying Ryu and Dread King Rathalos. To make up for this weakness you should always accompany your deck with destruction cards such as Just Desserts, Sample Collection, or Obliteration. And we'll get into the strategies of what to combine those with and how to use them. Next up we have Ouroboros as Wesker's second hero art. On use, it summons the highest cost card in your graveyard to the battlefield. This is a tricky hero art that can quickly turn the tide in your favor. It only requires that you have your high cost card in your graveyard. So you'll combo this hero art with the false throne card, which guarantees that it'll put the highest cost card in your deck into the graveyard. Unlike Dark Destruction, the deck does require a bit of setup and comes with some heavy risks. First, you have to hope that you pull a False Throne card and do not pull your high cost cards into your hand. If it plays out right, you can build up your AP and slam a heavy unit out instantly. Only the highest cost will be summoned and False Throne will assure that the highest cost gets put into the graveyard. This deck heavily relies on what you put in as your heavy hitter as you're going to be summoning them constantly with Ouroboros and you still want to hold your opponent back while you build up to that strength. You'll be including revenge cards to give yourself some extra minions to help protect you along the way. There are two cards worth putting in the graveyard and that would be the Devil Joe and 10 MP M Bison. Personally, I recommend Bison as he will also return other cards from your graveyard to your EX pocket when Bison is defeated, allowing you to return more units and they'll be stronger than before. This makes Ouroboros a late game hero art as you can swiftly stack some powerful units in your hand for as long as you hold the opponent off long enough to get Ouroboros going. Any rush deck will put a stop to you as they'll be able to overwhelm you early before you can get the cards you need. You'll want to accompany this deck with a few destruction cards to keep other powerful cards in check or running revenge zombies to keep yourself well defended. Finally, we have Bringer of Nightmares. This hero art focuses heavily on the revenge mechanic. Being the lowest cost AP hero art in the game, you can afford to sacrifice units as you need. You'll be able to overwhelm other decks with ease while you require them to waste MP to deal with the initial threat of whatever you throw out and then be able to return that threat at a much lower cost with higher power. The only issue here is that the revenge cards lack utility, and other utility units that have things such as flying, seal, and destruction will ultimately put your army to a disadvantage. This hero art works wonders against any burn deck as they won't be able to burn all of your revenge cards away. For each revenge card in a deck, you will have another unit to pull out that is slightly stronger. To deal with other utility cards with flying, it is very important to bring some destruction and damage cards of your own. While providing some decks for you to look through, I wanted to cover some very important cards of Wesker and discuss the various differences between each version and why we use that version. First we'll look at the Revenge Draw cards. We have two important ones, Inheriting Ambition and Gathered Souls. 
While they do essentially the same thing, inheriting ambition costs 1 less MP and will sacrifice 3 life, where gathered souls will cost 2 MP and just draw the card with no other cost. In almost every case it is far more worthwhile to run gathered souls, as it is free to play when played during a response. During a response you have 2 free active MP that pays for the card, even though you could still pay for inheriting ambition. Paying with 2 MP for that one response builds your AP faster and you don't lose life. This will help you maintain an HP and MP advantage while also building up for your hero art. Essentially the strategy is just to wait for an opponent to play an action card for you to get a free revenge pull. This will avoid that needless life loss for a cheaper version and build your hero art. Next we have destroy cards which are very important for removing several of the utility units away from the board. Gathering Effluvium and Murderous Spikes are two great choices to destroy low cost cards. I find that Gathering Effluvium comes in more handy when it comes to countering other revenge decks since it removes the card regardless of its power. Murderous Spikes has on occasion worked, but it is easily countered with any other action card that would raise the unit's attack above 2. When it comes to units higher than 5 MP, there are a total of 3 different cards I suggest to use. Just Desserts, Sample Collection, and Obliteration. The primary difference between these cards is their slightly altered cost. Just Desserts requires a card of yours to be destroyed in order to work. Sample Collection destroys one of your cards randomly. And Obliteration is just a higher cost card but destroys any target of your choice. As many would suggest to use Just Desserts for its lower cost, the price of using this card is that you must have the unit be destroyed in order for it to work. If the opponent reacts with a card that destroys your sacrifice, then Just Desserts is lost. I find that Sample Collection gets the job done far more often. Though it still destroys a card of yours, it can still work without requiring you to even have a unit to sacrifice. So even if they burn a card that destroys your card that w is chosen by Sample Collection, the effect still destroys their unit regardless. Additionally, you can play it with no units on the field and it still takes effect, where Just Desserts requires you to have a unit to even be played in the first place. Obliteration is also good to keep in deck as it may be the most expensive out of the three, but it is something that allows you to not only choose your target but not sacrifice anything else as well. Sample Collection will pick at random what is destroyed and you can't rely on RNG to always be on your side, especially when the enemy's board is filled. So typically when creating a deck with destruction cards, I'll choose one Obliteration and two Sample Collections. Regardless with your hero art for Wesker, you're going to have to play the early game safe. Wesker's costs are pretty high for what they output. Zombies with revenge are relatively weak and don't hold up well to other cards around the 3 to 4 MP cost. When you draw the revenge, that's when you begin to hold a slight advantage as you can pump out a full army with high power at a very low cost. Mixed with your hero art, you should be able to overwhelm your opponent mid to late game. Wesker matches up with almost any color. He stands firm against the odds, but finds himself at a bit of trouble against purple unless he has the perfect hand. Dante and Morgan can both counter his destruction cards with negate cards that effectively prevent him from removing their win condition cards and puts Wesker at a massive MP loss. However, green decks such as X and Chun-Li can't hold up very well against Wesker. Heal and shield cards can't stop a destroy card, and unfortunately for them, they'll have to hope you don't draw them. Wesker will have to watch out for the seal and reset cards from green. Having a revenge card reset will cause the card to lose its bonuses from revenge, and it will also not be able to get another revenge activated. Seal can also prevent the revenge from activating in the first place, causing the card to go directly to the graveyard after it's been defeated. Red burn decks such as Rathalos, Ryu, and Jill are problematic for Ouroboros Wesker, but otherwise you should be fine with the other two hero arts. Make sure to keep destroy cards ready for fate defying Ryu and Dread King Rathalos. Mirror matches against another Wesker turn into a stall war where you try to end up timing out the game and having the highest HP to win that war. Be sure not to take damage in these mirror matches to the best of your ability or save your heal cards for the end to pull out a last second heal to push yourself above your opponent. Finally, Nergigante. Though he used to be a powerhouse that completely countered everything about Wesker, he has been drastically nerfed and very fortunately for us is heavily countered by Dark Destruction. So 
you need to be a little worried about how fast Nergigante can snowball with certain buff cards, but otherwise you should have the upper hand from beginning to end. Before we wrap this video up, let's cover my Dark Destruction deck the way I built it and provide you guys the QR codes to my three Wesker decks. My Dark Destruction deck consists of a good balance to defeat most other decks and has gotten me to champion. We run two Selfish Predations to help stall the game against other Weskers while using and Gathering Effluvium as my counter to their revenge cards after they've gained their buff. The two three zombies are there as my basic meat cards for revenge and a low cost unit. The three two zombies, however, are a weaker unit technically, but upon their defeat they refund one MP. I use this as an MP boost to help build my AP a little faster. Cerberus is a better version of zombie and unfortunately we can only include three of them, so I did. So therefore you have zombies and Cerberus as your primary meat of the deck. Ruthless Retrieval is a fantastic way of expanding the deck with more units. Hopefully we want to pull another zombie or Cerberus card from the graveyard. It gets a buff, is easy to play, and also gets its revenge back acting as two units from the graveyard and allows me to stall the game even longer. Summon Minions, though I only have one of them, is a great card for pulling any unit out of my deck. If I use it as a reaction, it only costs one MP while it uses the two free MP, but the reason we don't use more than one is because it does sacrifice three life and there's not a lot of room to lose life in this deck, so we only use one and if I get it, fantastic, if I don't, I guess that's even better. But usually I do make it to the end of my deck and I'll usually see this card once a game. Bishamon is a very powerful card, but I'm using him to replace one of the three seven vials. The reason for this is because Bishamon does not take MP, but instead hurts himself every time he attacks. The vials are very powerful, but in the case that I've drawn all three of them and played all three of them, they would effectively remove six of my max MP while they're all on the field. So Bishamon can be that powerful unit, but also keeps my MP a little higher, so I only use two vials in the case that I draw them all. T002 Tyrant is a must for any revenge deck. Upon his defeat, though he may seem weak as a 4-1, he destroys any other one attack card on the field. So this is fantastic for you to just throw him out when there are MP boosters out. He's the MP booster counter while also returning as a 4-9 beast. So I picked two Jettas to replace any of the high cost revenge cards because the six cost revenge cards come back at 3 MP and are about as strong as Jetta when he comes back. But Jetta comes back at 2 MP because it rounds down when it revenges. So it's very important to have Jetta in here to complement the Tyrant strength. So your Tyrant and Jetta are your true strength cards of this deck. They will come back as your strongest minions of revenge. So as discussed before, we have two sample collections in this deck for destruction, and the Spreading Infection Legendary card we didn't really talk about, but this is really a must if you can get it for any revenge deck. It adds three zombies to the field, those three zombies have revenge in them. If they're defeated, they go into your deck with 3-6. This becomes extremely powerful, especially in Bringer of Nightmares, in terms of just having more cards to bring back. Especially in a stall deck versus another Wesker, this will help expand your deck so that you have more units to summon as you're constantly sacrificing things against each other. And then our last card is Obliteration, we've already talked about Destruction cards several times. That about wraps up all I got on Wesker. If you want the breakdown of my Ouroboros or Bringer of Nightmares deck, let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave the QR code for all three of the decks I used in this video. I'll be working on other heroes and providing guides for each of their hero arts, so you'll be able to craft champion rank decks with the hero arts you want. Also, I'll release some deck gameplay of each of the decks you see here, plus the ones in the future, so you can expect to see some full games of Wesker pretty soon. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more Teppin, and as always, good game.